Hello and welcome to our new YouTube tutorial. In this video, we're going to be building a food recipe searching app with React. This will be our second React project on our YouTube channel. It's going to be a kind of simple one, but at the same time, it will be interesting because throughout this project, we're going to use React hooks, also the recipe searching API and some NPM packages. I expect that you already know JavaScript and some basic stuff of the React. Alright, let's go ahead and describe the project. So we have here the heading and the search input field. If I search for any of the foods, let's say pizza, then we will get here 10 different results. I mean 10 different types of pizzas. The results are represented as cards. We have here the name of the specific pizza, also the image. Then down below we have the URL. If I click it, we will go to some website where we can find more information about this food. Besides that, we have here a button called Ingredients. If I click it, then we will get all the ingredients of the food. If I leave the input field empty and click the button directly, then we will get the alert message saying that we have to fill the form. Also, if I type here some food name that doesn't exist, we will get another alert message saying that there is no food with such a name. All right, so that's it what we're going to build. I have created a new folder on the desktop called React App. Let's go ahead and open it in VS Code. So the first thing that I'm going to do is installing the React application. For that, let's open the terminal. Before I run here some commands, you need to note that if you want to use a Node Package Manager, then you should have already installed Node.js, which is the JavaScript runtime environment, and it allows us to run the JavaScript on the server side. Actually, you don't have to know Node.js, but you should install it in order to run the Node Package Manager. By the way, we're planning to release some tutorials regarding Node.js in the future, so stay tuned. Alright, let's go ahead and install React App. For that we have to run npx create React App. And now we have to specify the name of the app. Let's call it Food App. This process takes some time, so I'll be back once it is installed. Alright. So the installation process is done. Let's go ahead and cd into the folder. And then run the project to the browser. For that we have to run npm start. Ok, so the project is up and running. Lastly, I want to place the editor and the browser side by side. And then get started. So I'm going to build the app from scratch, therefore let's get rid of all the generated files from here. As you see, right now the app has crashed. Let's go ahead and create a new file in the source folder. I'm going to call it index.js. I'm going to bring in a couple of modules here, but before I do that, I want to show you one of the VS Code packages called ES7 React Redux Snippets. This package allows us to write some React code with shortcuts, so I recommend to install and use this package. So now I want to import React and React DOM, and instead of typing the entire code, I just need to write IMR. It will import React from React. As for the React DOM, we have to type IMRD. Besides that, we have to import the app component as well. Actually, right now it doesn't exist, but we will create it soon. And finally, let's render the app to the browser. For that, we have to insert here React DOM dot render. Render method takes two arguments. The first one is going to be the app, which should be written as the HTML tag. As for the second one, we have to select root div element, which is placed in the index.html file in the public folder. So let's 
select this element using get element by id method and pass here the id root so this is the main root element and with the help of this element the entire application will be rendered on the page right now we have an error because apt.js file doesn't exist so let's go ahead and create it so in order to render the application to the browser we have to create a component which is going to be either class-based component or a functional one in this case i'm going to create a functional component for that we can use the shortcut rafce so the functional component is generated let's insert here some text as the h1 heading element i'm going to write here food searching up so if i save then the app will be rendered on the page all right before we start to create different components and program the application i want to take care of the styling throughout this tutorial we're not going to write any css we will use some ready styles so let's go ahead and create app.css file then i'm going to grab all the styles and paste them here actually you can find those styles in the source files we have a link in the description by the way i want to note here one thing we have uploaded all the source files on github but these files do not include the node modules folder so if you want to use those files you need to open the project in the editor and first of all you need to run the command npm install in the terminal it will generate all the node modules and you will be able to use the project files app.css file will be included in the project so you can grab all the styles from this file all right so hopefully you managed to get the css styles as you can see right now h1 heading element has got some styles actually it should be placed in the center of the page and for that let's assign to the div element class name app okay so before we proceed I want to have a look at the API that we're going to use in this project. We have to visit the website called edamam.com. Edamam or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. So this is the website of this API. In order to use this API, you need to sign up. So here we have different options. We're going to use a developer option, which is free and you have 5000 api calls in a month let's click start now and then go ahead and fill those input fields and sign up i already have an account so i'm not going to go through this process again because it is quite simple once you register then you will end up on that page so first of all i'm going to show you the api documentation you have to click the documentation and then select recipe searching API. So you can find here all the information about the API. I mean, you can find here different parameters of the search request. What we need here is the URL. So I'm going to grab it. Then create a variable in the app component. I'm going to call it URL. And paste the link here. So we have to change this URL slightly. We don't need this part at all. So let's get rid of it. You can see here your app ID and your app key. Actually, we need to generate both of them from the website and put them here. So let's go back to the website and then click the dashboard. Next, we need applications and then we have to click view. So here we have an application ID and the application key. Let's go ahead and grab the ID and create a new variable. Let's call it app underscore ID. As you see, I use here capital letters. After that, let's copy the key. Create another variable. I'm going to call it app 
underscore key and paste the key here. All right. So now we have to pass those variables in the link. Actually, I'm going to use ES6 template strings. So let's change the quotes into backticks and specify the variable names inside the curly braces. We need app ID and app key. Okay, so now I want to make a test request and show you what kind of data we can get from the request. In order to make a request, you can use a couple of different ways. In our case, we're going to use one of the NPM packages called Axios, which right now is one of the popular ones. Besides that, you can also use Fetch API, but I prefer the Axios. So let's go ahead and install this package, run npm install axios. Once it is installed, then we need to import it. All right, so in order to make a request, I'm going to create a function, which then will be executed once we click the heading element, and I'm going to log the result to the console. So let's create function and call it get data. So as we said, we have to make a request and we need to get some data from that request. It actually takes some time. I mean a tiny little amount of time. While the request is going to be made, in the meantime, we don't need to execute any of the JavaScript code. We have to wait for the response and therefore I'm going to use an async await syntax. Let's create a variable. I'm going to call it result. Then we need the keyword await. And now in order to get the result from the request, we have to use get method. I mean, we need axios.get. And inside the parentheses, we have to pass URL. After that, let's run the result to the console. All right. So the function is ready. Now we have to attach a click event to the heading element. So we need onClick attribute. And we have to pass here the function name. Actually, we don't need to call this function here. We just need to pass the function name without parentheses. When we click the element, then the function will be called automatically. So if I click the heading, then we will get the result in the console. Let's drop down this object. So we have here a couple of different properties. You see here data, which is the most important one for us. Also, we have here status with the code 200. It means that we have made a successful request. Let's go ahead and drop down the data. As you see, we have here a default query chicken. That's because in the URL chicken is specified as a default query. So if I change it, let's say into pizza, and click again the heading, then we will get the results about pizza. Eventually we will get the query from the input field, but we will do that a bit later. All right, the next thing that we are interested in here is a property called hits. It includes an array with 10 different items, and those are the actual recipes. If we drop down it, then you will find that each recipe has a couple of different properties. We have here label, which can be used as the name of the food. Then you can find here image, URL. Also down below we have another array, which includes the ingredients of the food. So throughout this project we will use some of those properties. Alright, next I'm going to create a form element in which we will have a search input field and also the submit button. I'm going to assign to form class name search form. Then insert here input with the type text and with the placeholder attribute. I'm going to pass here search food. Besides that, I'm going to use attribute called autocomplete and I'm going to set it to off. This attribute allows us to disable the autocompletion of the food name that I entered previously. Next, I'm going to create submit button with the input element. We need type submit and the value search. 
All right, actually, I'm going to get rid of on click attribute from the heading element because we need to execute the function get data once we submit the form. So I'm going to assign to the form on submit attribute. And we have to pass here the function name. I'm going to call it on submit. And I'm going to create this function now. The first thing that I want to do is to prevent the default action of the submit button. I mean, by default, once you click the submit button, it will reload the page. And in order to avoid this action, we need to pass here an event object. And we have to attach to it prevent default method. Besides that, we have to call here function get data. So once I click the button, then we'll get the data in the console. All right. The next thing that I want to do is to take care of the query. As you know, right now, by default, we have pizza and we have to change it dynamically. I mean, we need to grab the value that will be written in the input field and we have to make it query. So I'm going to create a piece of state using react hook. Let's go ahead and import use state hook. Then let's go ahead and create a piece of state. I'm going to use an array destructuring. Let's pass here query and then set query. So the query is going to be a piece of data that should be updated. As for the set query, it should be the method that will be used to update this piece of data. I'm going to set the query to an empty string. All right, now we have to grab the value from the input field and for that we have to use onChangeEvent. Let's pass here onChange function, which I will create in a second. Let's pass here event object. So in order to grab the value from the input field, we have to use event object with its property called target. And also we need the value. So first of all, let's run to the console. E.target.value. So once I start to type in the input field, then we will get the value to the console. All right, so this value should be the query. And in order to update the query dynamically, as we already said, we have to use the setQuery method. So instead of the console.log, let's use setQuery. And finally, we have to pass query here in the URL. We need dollar sign and then query in the curly braces. All right. So now if I search for, let's say, steak and check the data, we will get the proper results about steak. So the query works fine. And now we have to start to work on displaying the results on the page. Before I do that, I want to add here a couple of things. Once we search for the food, then I want to clear the input field. I mean to clear the input once we submit the form. For that, we have to add to the input the value and we have to pass here query. And also we need to use the set query method. And we have to set it to an empty string. So if I search for, let's say, pizza and submit the form, then the input field will be cleared. Okay, let's go ahead and start to display the results on the page. We need to create a new piece of state for recipes. So let's go ahead and use array destructuring. We need here recipes. And then set recipes. So I'm going to set recipes to an empty array. Now we have to get access to recipes. Let's take a look at the data once again. I'm going to search for pizza. So here we're getting lots of information, but right now the most important one is a property called hits, which includes an array of recipes. So we have to update the value of recipes in the state. As you know, right now it is an empty array, so we have to add to recipes the data from the hits array. 
So in the getData function, we need to use setRecipes method. And now we have to get access to hits array. As you know, the data is stored in the result variable, so we need here the result. It should be followed by the data property. And now we need hits. So we got access to recipes array and we updated the value of recipes in our state. Let's go ahead and display some data on the page. In this case, I'm going to display the label of each recipe. In the label, I mean the name of the food. So let's open the div with the class name recipes right after the closing form tag. Then open curly braces. We need to use here a conditional statement. I mean we have to check if recipes array is empty or not. If it's not empty, it means that we have to receive the data that we have requested. So as the condition, we need to insert recipes not equals to an empty array. Next, we have to use the logical AND operator. So if this part is true, then the second part will be executed. So we have to loop through the recipes array, get access on each recipe item and grab the value of the label property. In order to do that, I'm going to use one of the array helper methods called map. We need recipes.map. Then we need to insert here the callback function, which should take one parameter. And actually, it is going to be the current item of the array. So let's insert here recipe. And then return h2 heading element with the following content. So first of all, we need here the current item from the array, recipe. Then again, recipe, which is the property of the current item. And after that, we need to get access to the label property. All right, let's go ahead and search for the food. So we got here 10 different results on the page. Right now they do not have any style, so that's why they look this way. But it's not a problem. The key point here is that we could manage to display the data on the page. So instead of the heading element, we need to display the recipe component with some other piece of data as well. Now it's time to create a new component. Let's at first create a new folder called components. And then create file recipe.js. So let's go ahead and create a functional component. For that we have to type RAFCE. So this component should receive a recipe as the props. As we said, we have to pass this component instead of the heading that we used here. So first of all, let's import the recipe component. We should import it from the components folder. And then down below, instead of the H2 heading element, let's insert the recipe component. So this component should have a recipe attribute with the value recipe, because as we said, the recipe component should receive the recipe as the props. So if I search for the food, it says take, then we will get the recipe 10 times. And also we will get the warning saying that each child in a list should have a unique key prop. So this component should have a key prop. It helps react in quick rendering on the page. We can use here some unique ID. Right now we don't have any ID for the items, but we can generate it with the help of one of the packages called UUID. So I'm going to install this package. Let's run npm install UUID. Once it is installed, then we have to import it. Let's open curly braces and insert here v4, I mean version 4, as UUID v4. And then from UUID. After that, down below, we have to call UUID v4. 
So this package will generate a unique ID for each recipe in the list. If I search for the food, then the warning message will be gone. Okay, let's go back to the recipe component. First of all, I'm going to grab the recipe from props and destructure it. Then we need to grab a couple of properties from the recipe object. Let's use again destructuring. We need here a couple of different properties. I mean label, then image, then URL, and finally ingredients. We have to grab those properties from recipe dot recipe. Then after that, I'm going to create some JSX. We need a div with the class name recipe. Then I'm going to pass here H2 heading elements. And as the content, I'm going to use label. Next comes image. I'm going to pass image in the source attribute. As for the value of the alt attribute, I'm going to use again label. Next we need link elements. In the H reference attribute, we have to specify the URL. Actually, once we click the URL, I want to open a new tab in the browser. And for that, I need to use a target attribute. And it should be set to underscore blank. Besides that, we need to use the rel attribute with the values no opener and no refer. We need this attribute because we might have some security issues without it. Let's pass here URL. All right, finally, I'm going to use the button. Let's pass here ingredients. This button eventually will allow us to display the ingredients of the food. But right now, let's create just a simple button. Okay, let's go ahead and search for the food. So here we go. We have here 10 results represented as the cards and I think they look pretty nice. If I click the URL, then the new tab will be opened in the browser and we will be redirected to some website where you can find more information about the food. Alright, most of our project is done. We have to take care of the ingredients button and then we will have to program alerts. I'm going to create a new component which will include the details of the recipe. So let's go ahead and create a new component recipe details.js and then make it a functional component. So we need RAFCE. Let's pass here recipe details. After that, let's go ahead and import this component in the recipe.js file. And finally, let's insert here recipe details component. So if I search for the food, then each of the recipes will have recipe details at the end of the card. All right, now I have to do the same thing with the recipe details. I mean, we have to assign ingredients as the prop and then we will get the data from the ingredients in the recipe details component. So let's go ahead and assign to the recipe details ingredients. And then pass here again ingredients. Then go to the recipe details components. Use here destructuring and insert here the ingredients. All right. So we have to loop through the ingredients array and grab the data from it. I mean the text of the ingredients and also the weight. So we have to return ingredients dot map. Then I'm going to pass here callback function with the parameter ingredient. As I said, it's going to be the current item of the array. So now we have to return some JSX. Actually, ingredients will be represented as a list. So let's open the UL tag with the class name, ingredient, list. 
Besides the class name attribute, we have to use again the key prop, otherwise we will get a warning message. Let's import again UUID. We need import V4 as UUID V4. And then from UUID, let's go ahead and pass it here. So inside the list, we will have two list items. The first one is going to be the text of the ingredient. As for the second one, it's going to be a weight. So let's open li tag with the class name ingredient text. And I'm going to pass here ingredient dot text. Let's duplicate this line of code. Change the class name. We need here ingredient weight. Also, instead of the text property, let's use weight. And in front of the color brace, let's write weight dash. Okay, so now if I search for the food, then we will get the recipes with the ingredients. All right, so we are moving forward. Now we have to take care of the button. By default, those ingredients should be hidden. And once we click the button, they should display. So let's go to the recipe.js file and import use state hook. So we have to create a new piece of state. It's going to be the Boolean value and it will help us to create something like toggle action. So let's use an array destructuring. I'm going to pass here show and then set show. By default, I'm going to set it to false. So on each click, we're going to update the state. I mean the value of the show. So let's assign to button on click attribute. Then insert here arrow function and use set show method. I'm going to pass here not show. So if the show is set to false, then it will be updated to true on click. And then on the next click, it will be set to false again and so on. All right, so we need to display the recipe details if the show is set to true. Therefore, we need here show followed by the logical and operator. So if the first part is true, if show is set to true, then we have to display recipe details. All right, let's go ahead and search for the food. Now, as you can see, by default, all the ingredients are hidden, but if I click the button, then they will display. Okay, so that's it about the ingredients. Actually, we are almost done with the project. The only thing that we have to do is to take care of the alerts. If we leave the input field empty and click the search button, then we should display the alert message saying that we have to fill the input field. And also besides that, we have to display the alert message once we type here the name of the food that doesn't exist. All right, let's go ahead and create a new component. I'm going to call it alert.js. Then make it a functional component. Use RAFCE. Let's assign to div element class name alert. And then insert here h3 heading element with the content alert message. After that, I'm going to import alert component into app.js file. We need here components folder, then alert. And then insert alert component inside the form. All right, so we have here an alert message and now we're going to make it work. So as I said, I'm going to display it once we click the search button without entering any characters into the input field. 
Let's go ahead and create a new piece of state. Use again array destructuring and pass here alert. And then the method set alert. I'm going to set alert to an empty string. Next, I'm going to use the if statement inside the getData function. So we need to execute this block of code if the query doesn't equal to an empty string. So let's insert here if statement. And as the condition, we have to pass here query not equals to an empty string. And put this code inside the if statement. So, if this condition is false, it means that the input field was empty and we have to display the alert message. So, we have to use else statement and we have to update the state. We need set alert with the message, please fill the form. And then down below, we need a conditional statement. So, if the alert is not empty, I mean, if it doesn't have the value, then we should display it. So we need alert not equals to an empty string. Then let's put here two ampersands. I mean, the logical and operator. So in order to get the message from the state, we have to pass here props alert with the value alert. Then we have to go back to the alert.js file. Let's use again the structuring and grab the alert. And finally, let's insert here inside the h3 heading element instead of this hard-coded text. So now if I leave the input field empty and click the search button, then the alert message will be displayed. All right. That's it about the first alert message. Now we have to take care of the second one. If we search for some food that doesn't exist, then we should get another alert message. For that, I'm going to use an if statement. But before that, I'm going to show you one thing. Let's go ahead and search for the food. Then check the data. So here we have a property called more and right now it is set to true. It means that we could find food with such name. Now, if I type here some characters and search for the food that doesn't exist, then we won't find any of the results and also the property more will be set to false. So it means that depending on that property, we can display the alert or not. Let's go ahead and create if statement. So we should display alert once the property more is set to false. So we need here not operator followed by result dot data dot more. And then we have to return set alert with a message no food with such name. Besides that, we have to set alert to an empty string here because if we cannot find the food and the alert is displayed and then if we search for the right name, the alert message should be gone. Alright, so if I type here some wrong name, then we will get the alert with the proper message. Alright, so actually we are done with this project. Everything seems to be working fine. It was kind of simple project, but I hope you enjoyed it and learned some new stuff in React. If you like this video, then please thumbs up, comment below, share the video, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notified on coming tutorials in the future. Alright, see you next time.